Welcome to Master Math. Here's a couple of tips that will help you get the most out of this lesson. First of all, you can watch it three, four, five times if you need. Secondly, if you go through a section and don't understand what we're talking about, hit your back button and review that section again. Next, when you come to a You Try It slide, hit your pause button, pull out some paper and pencil, do the problem yourself, and then hit the forward key to move on to my answer. Well, I hope you learn a little bit of math today and have a good time. Today, we're going to be talking about finding missing dimensions of plane figures and prisms. A plane figure is like a circle or a rectangle, a two-dimensional figure. A prism is a three-dimensional figure, like a box. And we're going to be trying to find missing dimensions in those figures. We're going to be trying to find the missing piece. It's kind of like a puzzle or a game. And I think it's going to be kind of fun. First, let's learn the rules. You know this rule. If you were given an equation, area equals base times height, and then you were told that the base was 6 and the height was 3, and you were asked to figure out what the area was, you wouldn't have any trouble. You'd replace the B with a 6. You'd replace the H with a 3. That B goes right there or right there. And your H is going to become 3. And you put that right there. And then you're going to calculate the area. It's going to be area equals 18. Well, that wasn't hard. You've done that before. But let's put a twist on it. Let's make this a little more complicated. What if you knew that the area equaled the base times the height, and you also knew that the area was 18, and the height was 3, but you were asked to figure out what the base was? What would you do? Well, the first step would be just like the first step up here. You'd substitute what you knew for the variables. Up here we put in a 6 and a 3 because we knew the base and the height. Down here, we know the area and the height. So we'd substitute 18 for the area, and we'd substitute 3 for the height, and then we'd still have to figure out what B meant. Could you do that? Think about it. What's your answer? Well, the answer is 6. And I know a lot of you got that. If you didn't get it, or even if you did get it, pay attention to the rest of the lesson because we're going to show you how to figure it out. Well, let's look at a similar problem. In this problem, we've got a rectangle, and we know that the area is 75 and the base is 15. And we're going to be asked, what's the height? Well, anytime you get this kind of a problem, the place to start is to write the formula down. We know the formula for area. That's A equals B times H. The area equals the base times the height. Now, we want to substitute what we know into that formula. We know the area is 75 and the base is 15. So we can rewrite this 75 equals 15 times H. But what do we do now? We got to solve for H. We got to figure out what H is. Oh, you guys know how to do that. You're experts, experts at algebra. We need to isolate the H, which means we have to get rid of the 15 times. What do we do to get rid of 15 times? We do the opposite or the inverse operation. We divide by 15. And we need to divide both sides by 15 to keep it equal. When we do that, on the right, our 15s cancel out and leave just H. And we know that H equals 75 divided by 15. 75 divided by 15 is 5. So H equals 5. Now we did that by substituting the numbers into the equation first. But we didn't have to do it in that order. We could have manipulated the equation 
So it read H equals some combination of B and A, and then solved it that way. We could have said that A divided by B equals B divided by B times H. In other words, I'm going to get rid of that B by dividing both sides of the equation by B, and then I can rewrite it A divided by B equals H. Then I could substitute 75 for A and 15 for B, and I'd get the same answer. Here's a slightly trickier example. This time we've got a prism. It's a three-dimensional figure. How are we going to figure that out? Well, we're going to need to know the formula for the volume of a cube or a, a prism, and that's the length times the depth times the height. Now they're going to give us some information. In this case, they're going to tell us that the volume equals 3,000, the length equals 20, the height equals 10, and they're going to ask us to tell, figure out what the depth is. How would we do that? Well, we'd want to substitute what we know into the formula. We know that the volume's 3,000, and we know that that 3,000 equals the length, or 20, times the depth, which we don't know, d, times the height, which is 10. Now, we want to get rid of the 20, so we isolate the d, so we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 20, and that's going to cancel out that 20 and leave d times 10 equals 3,000 divided by 20. Now we need to get rid of the 10, so we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 10, and when we do that, the 10's on the right are going to cancel each other out, so we've got d equals 150 divided by 10. And 150 divided by 10 is 15 centimeters. You try this one. Hit your pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, we know a few things in this problem. We know that the formula for the circumference of a circle is c equals 2 pi r. And we also know that the circumference of this circle is 37.68 inches. And we know that we're going to use 3.14 for pi. Well, there's two ways we could go about this. We could immediately substitute 37.68 for C and 3.14 for pi, and then we could manipulate the equation to solve for R. Or we could just keep all those variables in there and manipulate the equation with variables in it to find out what R equals in terms of the circumference and pi. Well, if the circumference equals 2 pi r, and I want to isolate r, then I've got to get rid of 2 pi. I've got to do the opposite of multiplying by 2 pi. So I'm going to divide by 2 pi. And if I divide the right by 2 pi, I better divide the left by 2 pi. Now, those 2 pi cancel each other out and leave just r, and r equals c divided by 2 pi. Well now, I could use this equation to solve any kind of similar problem. I can just substitute this 3768 for the C, as I did right there, and then calculate 2 times pi, or 2 times 3.14, and that would equal my radius. And when I did the math, 37.68 divided by 2 times 3.14 equals 6. The volume of this aquar aquarium is 5,184 cubic inches. And we know that its width is 24 inches and its height is 18 inches. 
So find x. Well, first thing to do is write down the equation or the formula. V equals B times L times H. The base times the length times the height. And we know V, we know the volume is 5184. And we know the base is 24 inches. And we know the height is 18 inches. So we can rewrite this equation. 5184 equals 24 times x, which is the dimension we don't know and we're trying to solve for, times 18. Now, I need to get rid of a 24 and I need to get rid of an 18, and they're both, both multiplications. So I'll divide the right side of the equation by 24 times 18, and I need to do the same to the left side of the equation. On the right, my 24s cancel each other out, my 18s cancel each other out, and leave just x. And on the left, I simplify that to 5,184 divided by 432. And after I do that division, I discover that x equals 12 inches. Now, well, this is a little bit tricky. Let's see you see, see it and then read it again so you focus in on the important stuff. Farmer Frida planted corn seed. Each bag of corn seed covers 1,000 square feet. She used all of eight bags of corn seed, and her cornfield is 125 feet long. How wide is her cornfield? Well, we, we, we know that each bag of corn seed covered a thousand square feet. A thousand square feet. That's square feet. That's a measurement of area, isn't it? And we know that she used eight bags of corn seed. For each of those eight bags, she covered a thousand square feet. So in total, she covered eight times a thousand or 8,000 square feet. Now, we know that the area equals the length times the width. And we just figured out that the area of Farmer Frida's cornfield is 8,000 square feet. And we know that the length of the cornfield is 125 square feet, or 125 linear feet. And we know that the area equals that length, 125 feet, times the width. And we're trying to solve for the width. So, to solve for that, we need to divide both sides of the equation by 125, so we isolate that w. And when we do that, we calculate that the width equals 64 feet. That's our lesson on finding missing dimensions of plane figures and prisms. I hope you learned a lot. Let's test that. Go to www.mastermath.info and down the worksheet on finding missing dimensions of plane figures and prisms. Try your luck there, and after you've finished, go back to MasterMath and take the quiz on finding missing dimensions in plane figures and prisms. I hope you had a good time, I hope you learned something, and I hope I see you again real soon.